to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Karumba. Present. Councilman DeWitt. Present. Councilwoman Carr. Here. Mayor Simmons. Here. Councilman O'Flynn. Councilman Gibson. Councilman Forbes. Here. Um, thank you very much. And I apologize. I skipped over the invocation. If Pastor Ernie Harvard of Vision Baptist would please step forward. I apologize, everybody. If you could all please rise. My apologies. I've only done that how many times? And you never <laughs> missed this, so I apologize. I thought it was his fault. <laughs> oh, not his fault. Thank you for being here with us this evening. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Father, we just want to begin for, by praying for these at the Bahamas and this uh, hurricane that you would continue to turn that. We thank you, Father, for the blessing that we receive by it not coming our way. Father, we pray for those that have been affected. We pray that you'll just be with them. Let them know that you're there with them to walk through this devastation. Father, we want to now pray for this council meeting. Lord, I know it's a very hard time. Typically, half the people come are satisfied. The other half go away unhappy with the decision, Father. And therefore, we pray for this city council that you would give them wisdom, clarity of mind, and Father, that you would be with those who do not hear the answer that they want to hear, Father, that you would just be with them and, and help them to receive it peacefully and in order. And Father, we, we pray that all of this is done to bring unity in our community and everything that we do. Father, we pray that you are glorified in it, and we just thank you for, for it. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor, very much. Thank you for being here this evening. And I must say, in three plus years, that's the first time I've ever done that, so I apologize. <laughs> first time for everything, see, so thank you. Very nice message, thank you so much. We're gonna start with public comment. Any members of the public that would like to speak on agenda items, please come forward at this time. Good evening, how are you? Good evening, this nice new system here that works so well. Mine is just on this um, interlocal agreement. It's under the consent agenda, item F. Every, every year I say the same thing. It's a no-brainer. I mean, I see the de deputies out on the water all the time, and I'm on the uh, Waterways Advisory Committee, and we prioritize the money. And the, the grants, are the, are, this is one of the most popular ones. I mean, we always run out of money, but the city always matches. They do exactly what they're supposed to. And what we do is we watch if people do what they say they're going to do, and otherwise we can cut them back. And if there's anything left over, we just spread it out. But anyway, be sure you vote for it. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, do I have to say? I don't have to say who I am. You know who I am. Matthew McGrath from Benita Springs. Thank you very much. Other members of the public that would like to speak, please come forward. Welcome, John. Good afternoon, Mayor, Honorable Council. Um, my name is John Pano. I represent the Benita Springs Downtown Alliance and CGT Kayaks. I like to talk about item number eight. Um, and first off, I want to state how important I do feel addressing the stormwater is. Um, this is crucial to us, not just the stormwater, but all our water issues. Um, but instituting a tax um, when we don't necessarily need to institute one, uh, is not uh, the proper way to go at, my, at this point. At least that's what I'm hearing from our membership. Um, they would like to see a form-based code passed, and right now we've missed opportunities to have a microbrewery and tap room downtown, to have outside dining, entertainment, music. Um, all these things are missing downtown because of a lack of code, and the lack of code has even affected the development of other parts of the city. Um, this is stopping us from generating valuable needed tax monies that could be used for stormwater. Um, secondly, by doing that would make our bamboo properties and other properties more um, uh, available and better for 
attractive for developers to buy and the property would sell. Again, putting a great deal of money in our coffers that could handle the storm water. It's, it's not that anybody's against this. This has to happen. It needs to happen. It's just how we raise the money. Secondly, thank you all for addressing this issue. This is so crucial. Thank you, John. Thanks for being here this evening. Other members of the public that would like to speak, please come forward at this time. Bonnie, welcome. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, just my two cents worth on the way we're approaching the stormwater utility. If we desperately need it, but with all of the new building in town and the value of houses being increased, I don't see this fitting under a new tax for anybody. It just seems so unfair. Okay, thank you. Other members of the public that would like to speak? <laughs> Welcome, Jesse. Mr. Mayor, Council, Jesse Purden for the record. I'm the Chairman of the Outreach Committee and I'm also the Vice Chairman of the Charter Review Commission. Um, it's unfortunate everybody wasn't here today, but I just had some thoughts I'd like to share on this upcoming tax. I've had a lot of people who've reached out to me and they were curious on whether this is two taxes or one, and I just want to clarify this is one. And then I've had other people who are saying, well, this isn't an ad valorem, so it's not a tax, it's a fee. And I just kind of wanted to clear that out. We're arguing semantics, whether it's a tax or it's a fee. The reality is that we're increasing property, or we're, we're increasing taxation on the citizens of Bonita Springs. And my only issue with that, and I'm not saying necessarily that the direction you're going is the wrong direction. What I'm saying is the financial mechanism whereby you're trying to get there is something that we need to really pause and consider because we raised $740,000 above what we thought we were going to get when property values increased in Bonita Springs this year. Okay, so think about that. 740 from the top, additional. Then additionally, last week, we got $3 million from FEMA. Those dollars are to go to a rainy day fund, and that rainy day fund is specifically for the swales, which is what we're addressing with this 1.5 million that doesn't even cover the project that we're talking about doing. It simultaneously creates a mechanism whereby each year we have to decide whether it's gonna go up or down. Those things definitely cause pause for me. So I think it's very important that the people who are watching at home pay attention Monday. Monday's gonna say a lot about what's going on, the direction we're going. When we raise 740,000 more than we thought, then we get 3 million back from FEMA. And now we're considering creating a new mechanism to tax ourselves. And part of that calculation is additionally based on state dollars that we are allowed to apply for, the same that every other municipality in the state of Florida is allowed to apply for them. State dollars are not a guaranteed thing, especially in that big of a pool. And as state priorities change, look at the shooting last year. Look at one of the cities that was completely annihilated by a storm. Priorities change, then those dollars change. So to try to calculate and base something based on arbitrary dollars that may or may not be there, I don't think is the most sound decision for us as a city. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Hi, I'm, uh, J Hi, I'm Jim Magnus. Uh, we've got a number of pro properties <laughs> in Bonita Springs. Um, I'd like to talk about the stormwater uh, as well. Uh, my understanding was that the reason that you're going after the stormwater uh, to make a separate district is because you're required to to get additional state and federal funding. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But uh, all I can say is that in talking to Molly Williams, who is the uh, engineer that you guys have that's handling this thing, um, she tells me that uh, even those properties, those commercial properties, that have their own stormwater that they take care of on site, that you don't have any vehicle at this point and you're not considering um, actually not taxing those people. I mean, if, if I've put up a water system on my property, I should be able to get the benefit of that water system um, because it's not feeding into the, um, into the city system. So I, I'd like you to look at that. Uh, the next thing is this uh, building on uh, building monument uh, luminaries, this new code that you guys have out. It's going to cost me, just for one of my properties, uh, over $6,000 to put in all new light fixtures. You know, I just think that you've got to take into consideration safety. Uh, the down light doesn't provide enough light in our properties to be able to go around on the inside part of the uh, property. And that is causing us a problem because, for safety reason, if you were to change the, the, the code so that it would say... Um, 
something to the effect where lights on the internal of your property um, or adjacent to commercial property uh, and and if it does go across a uh, a city road, that's where uh, Jason Albert, your code enforcement guy, is telling me that the problem is. So if you could change it that way, at least you aren't going to be, you know, causing problems for, you know, businesses like ours. We're a small business. We're just a family business. And, and we're getting nailed on that. Um, I also think that uh, you need to put all the properties up for a request for proposal. If you try to micromanage exactly what it is that you want, um, You'd be better off to put them out for proposal, see what you get, and you can pick something that you like. If you don't like it, you can always put it back out for request for proposal again. Um, uh, as Jesse was talking about, uh, our commercial property assessments have gone up. One went up 145%, one went up 70%, one went up 24%, and one up, went up uh, 14%. So you obviously are getting a substantial amount from the commercial side, you know, taking consideration uh, those people that are paying some of the taxes, please. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Other members of the public, good evening. Hi, Dwight Esman, uh, live off Paradise Road. I wasn't planning on speaking, but I did bring some notes. Most of you have heard my points before. I just want to reiterate them, particularly for some of the people out here. The reasons for a stormwater utility fee. Current funding levels will never be enough to correct the flooding ca caused by stormwater runoff. The city, I believe, has identified a need for $39 million in capital improvements over the next 10 years. And that doesn't count maintenance and repairs. Water intrusion into homes results in very expensive repairs, which will eventually affect everyone's flood insurance rates. The fee will provide a dedicated funding source that allows the city to apply for grants that they might not get otherwise. It will ensure that commercial properties <laughs> with lots of impervious service pay their fair share. Under the current system, commercial properties contribute 7% of the total funding, but have 29% of the total impervious surface in the city. Other cities in Southwest Florida with yearly fees are Cape Coral at $110, Fort Myers at $54.72, and Naples at $160.20. As, uh, as of a 2016 survey, over 160 cities in Florida had a stormwater utility with an average rate of about $80 a year, including 32 that are in the Southwest Florida Water Management District. This $50 annual residential fee is much lower based on that ERU equivalent residential unit of other communities. A good stormwater management system helps ensure clean water in our rivers and gulf and we know what an effect that had a few months back. Every dollar must be used for stormwater management here in the city. And even if your home never floods, flooding is a problem for Bonita Springs that lowers the quality of life just a few inches of water on a roadway will drastically slow down first responders. So lives could be saved with better stormwater management. I don't believe it's up to the Southwest Florida Water Management District, Lee County, the state of Florida, or the U.S. government to fix this problem. It's up to us. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Please come forward. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, evening, Mayor, Council. Um, to go back to the stormwater management, um, sir, and what you were just your name? Uh, my name is Chris Magnus. I apologize. Um, businesses, when you are adding this additional fee to small businesses, uh, even at landlords, it trickles down to other small businesses and triple net leases. The city of Bonita Springs is getting a reputation amongst commercial real estate agents as a city that's difficult to do business in. Adding more taxes, adding more fees, adding more cost is driving real estate agents to push tenants, even national tenants, towards North Naples or Estero. This is something that I'm seeing with my property right now. Um, as far as businesses paying 7% or whatever percentage that is, that is not taken into account the water management systems that businesses already have to pay for, already have to put into place, and do not affect the city water. We're getting hammered by taxes and fees, and it's making it very difficult 
to do business in Bonita Springs. And I would appreciate it if you guys would take that into consideration as you are voting on more taxes, fees, et cetera. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Hello there. Welcome. You know me. I do. Nice to see you. Welcome. Hi, I'm Ann Wirtz, and I live in Bonita Heights Mobile Home Park on Bonita Beach Road. And it is a small park, and we only have mobile homes. And for one thing, I don't see that we should be charged what a big, beautiful home that has everything uh, the same price for this water uh, uh, stuff to be taken care of. And I talked to a lot of people in our park and a lot of them are very upset. Our taxes keep going up. We only own old mobile homes. We don't have much coming into our park. We have no pool. We have nothing that a lot of people have. And I think that, that if they're gonna charge, they should look at the price a little bit and not charge somebody in an old mobile home that has not much money uh, the same as a great big beautiful home with your pool and all of the stuff you people have because we can't afford it. And a lot of the people in our park are about ready to say, boy, I'm gonna have to get out of here. I can't afford to have a mobile home in Benita. And it's just like every time we turn around, they want more and more and more. And even our park keeps wanting to add things and make people pay for trees being cut. And you have no idea what the prices for the old people have. And I'm going to be 83, and it's a little hard. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Other members of the public that would like to speak? OK, seeing none, we're going to move on to the uh, consent agenda. Council, what's your preference? So move. Second. Okay, there's been a motion to accept in a second. Is there any discussion? Amy. I just, I'm going to pull E. I'm going to vote yes, but I want to talk about it. Okay, let's pull E. You don't have to pull. We can vote. I'm going to vote yes. Okay, okay. Um, okay, there's been a motion to accept in a second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Carumba. Aye. Councilman DeWitt. Aye. Councilwoman Carr. Aye. Mayor Simmons. Aye. Councilman Gibson. Aye. Councilman Forbes. Aye. Item E, Amy. I just, I actually have a question for Derek because um, we had a, um, a discussion previously about having the city open for meetings okay or and you we were supposed to work on something so have we worked on it <laughs> i guess we're, we're working on a policy on yeah, a policy. public access to our facilities and some of the limitations on that uh obviously we didn't have time to do that between that meeting and this one and i see you're going to be the keynote speaker here aren't you? i am that's new to me i i saw they addressed it to me but unless, I didn't. Unless, <laughs> unless i'm reading it wrong but I, I'm, I'm so happy i mean i think it's a good uh venue for them but anyway but I, it's really i'm just yeah. wondering if we I'm have just looking for a check <laughs> can we come and listen listen to you or something uh no but seriously um i just wanted an update on whether we, our policy was moving. yeah we're, we're actually wrapping up the policy about utilize utilization of city facilities whether it's parks our halls anything in with some policies on controlling the use so we've we've had questions about free speech what about disruptive speakers those all those kind of things are a, a policy i'm working on with uh, with meg and so that'll all come in together as one item so things are more complicated are always more complicated. we're already working on so the latter issue when this this the issue of uh the other senator's visit came up thank you so much and, and you've previously um not this particular organization uh the florida chapter of american planning association but you've previously approved very similar educational symposiums for the Florida Planning and Zoning Association, Engineers Association, so with credits. I don't have any problem with this. I just wondered what we were doing. Okay, thank you. Wonderful. Great. Any, anything else, Council? Okay, we're going to move on to uh, proclamations and presentations. If I could please have uh, Paulette Walters, Bob Walters, Tina McNeese, uh, Patricia Angel, or, and I'm, I'm sorry, my eyes are going. That's, uh, and Marianne Baker. I think I messed up. Angelique. And Councilman Gibson has, is here, so he's present as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, please. Hello. 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 H
Marianne, that's my mother's name. I can remember that. Hi, Peter. <laughs> yes, yeah, nice to see you. How are you? Hi, nice to see you. And you'll get a kick out of this, see? I'm going to hold this out a little bit so I can okay. see it, all right? And this is a uh, proclamation uh, for Constitution Week, September 17th through the 23rd, 2019, whereas September 17th, 2019 marks the 200 and 32nd anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the uh, Constitutional Convention. And whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate the occasion. And whereas public law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States designating September 17th through 23rd as Constitution Week. And now, therefore, I, Peter Simmons, Mayor of the City of Bonita Springs, Florida, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of Bonita Springs, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through September 23rd, 2019 as Constitution Week, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly, vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties. Signed, Mayor Peter Simmons, City of Bonita Springs, Florida, September 4th, 2019. Hallelujah for what you're doing. You're, you're man, after, man and women after my own heart. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, bare, yes. The uh, Barefoot Beach chapter of uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. Thank you so very much for your time and consideration in doing this for our request, because we are having a big celebration and luncheon for all of the chapters in Southeast, Southwest Florida uh, to celebrate this week. And when, where and when will that be? Will you let me know? It is Saturday, the t it's a week from Saturday, Saturday the 10th. Would you like to attend? I'd like, I'd like to attend. I will make that arrangement, <laughs> absolutely. I'd like to attend because I've talked about the Mayflower, but I thought we also had relatives that fought in the Revolutionary War. Wonderful, it's the 14th, uh, it's a week from Massachusetts. Okay. So I think Where, I'm a can I Yes, you are. You could, be, you could be easily a member of, uh, they have Sons of the American Revolution too. But I will make sure you have all the information, and because uh, it is a week from Saturday, so I've been told it's the 14th. 14th. Yeah. It's no, the 14th. That, that's fabulous. And as I told my friend, the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh, I said, "You got off easy. You're Irish. See, I'm British. <laughs> it only took my relatives 400 years to go from an hour south of Boston to an hour north of Boston. It only took 400 years. But, uh, <laughs> but thank you very much for all this wonderful work. And anybody else want to share a message or? We're wonderful. Okay, I think we can get a picture. And please, please take that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no beeps. And you know how to, you have my contact information. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, well, we have our very special guest with us this evening, uh, Senator Kathleen Pasadomo. We'd like to ask her to please come forward and, and, and uh, catch us up on everything, and we're just so very glad that you're here. Committee week starts in September, and session starts in January, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you for inviting me, um, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to be here today because, as you know, the legislative delegation hearing for Lee County is coming up. Uh, for some reason, the Kyer is on the same day, so Senator Benacquisto is going to represent the Senate in the Lee uh, hearing, and I'll be representing um, the Senate in the Kyer. So what I would like to ask you all to do is and I don't know if you have come up with your legislative priorities yet, but I'd, I'd like to hear from, from you all personally um, because I won't hear it at the, um, at the meeting. You know, and if you have, haven't done it yet, I'll come back or you can get it to me or of course I talk to you all the time on the phone. Um, and you're not bad on text either. I'm no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm getting pretty good at it. I, <laughs> no typos. I, I do the emojis a lot. I've got, you know, a couple of cute ones that my kids are always making fun of me of. Um, but we are going to be early this year. 
So uh, the committee week starts September 17th and um, session starts the first week in January. So we're not going to have a whole lot of time, um, it, it, you know, going through the budget and, and those, the budget hearings are going to start early. Um, I know uh, last year we were disappointed that we were not able to get the um, Imperial River budget item uh, funded. We're going to try again this year, I hope. Um, I, I do want to tell you that I had a, a conversation with uh, Senator Bradley, who's the Senate Appropriations Chair, and he said, you know, we don't have a whole lot of fat in the budget this year. We kind of cut out a lot of it last year to do what we needed to do. Um, they anticipate a lower, I'm not sure why, I always thought the economy was doing better, but they don't anticipate the kind of revenue we had last year. So. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with projects, but I think that you're on the right track with your water projects because that's a priority of the governor and certainly a priority of all of us in Southwest Florida. So um, if there are any other things that you uh, want me to push for, I'm, you know, I'm there for you. No, that's great. That's wonderful. And uh, um, Council, what's your plan? Yeah, let's, let's start down here. Amy? I think uh, Arlene can we have a list because we've already reviewed this, so we can share that with you if you want to announce it out loud or just. Yeah, do you want to, do you want to do that now? Be good. We yeah. can, but we're sure. Sir, you, you have approximately eight items as, as general uh, legislative priorities, and then we'll move forward. And then we have our one funding request. We've continued the same um, concept and form, maybe giving it more broad of the general area, but mostly stormwater, but also to continue the potential of the the buyout program that we're working that would be an add-on that we've talked about but um, and, and thank you by the way for that because we got an additional 60 days yes. and then because of the hurricane was there additional time added know. to that oh because of the hurricane okay we, that we may, haven't may, done it yet but it's a possibility I, I think the 60 days uh gives you a, a nice window of opportunity and if you have any more issues, just let me know. Sure. And then I can call um, Director Lawson. He was, it, he was great with it because, you know, nobody's really applied for the funds. We don't want it to go away. And this is a perfect opportunity for uh, Benita. No, thank you very, very much for that. And our uh, residents, we've had a, a nice participation of paperwork so far. Applicants. We're up to 77 really? applicants. And the pool that we're talking about is less than 200, correct? Wait, oh, in terms of homes? Yes. It's around there, mm -hmm. approximately 200. Approximately 200 and 77 people have already. Owner-occupied owner homes. Right, in the, yes. In the dish, in the yeah, because of the criteria, absolutely. So what else you got there? <laughs> yeah, what else you got in the menu over there, right? I'll take the paper. The Springs yeah, right. supports funding for flooding reduction mitigation projects within our municipal boundaries. The City of Benita Springs supports state sustainable initiatives, especially those which would prevent discharges from Lake Okeechobee and which promote clean, fresh, <clears throat> and saltwater bodies. The city also proposes any water quality proposals that would negatively impact our city. The city of Indian Springs supports flooding reduction mitigation projects within our municipality and improvements to overall water quality. The city of Indian Springs supports state funding for projects which would advance uh, enhanced transportation connectivity for pedestrian and bicycle bicycles as well as design and construction for additional complete streets. The City of Benita Springs believes in, afford in affordable insurance rates for our citizens. Towards that end, the City opposes any action or legis legislation at any government level that will have an effect of, or sig of significantly increasing flood insurance rates. The City of Benita Springs supports efforts to provide state <coughs> funding for local acquisition of preservation lands, especially the density reduction groundwater resource DRGR areas of the city. The City of Bay Springs opposes any effect um, to allow fracking in and around the Southwest Florida area. The City of Bay Springs supports legislation that would allow paramutual facilities within counties that have passed referendums uh, to pr provide slot gaming. And then in general, the City of Bay Springs supports increased state funding for education, private, public, and charter schools, and supports state sustainable initiatives, including possible alternative sources of power and opposes any legislation that would preempt home rule protection. Well, that, oh, just to get all that? Actually, yeah, actually, I just hand down the sheet of paper. <laughs> we've, we've had, thank you, thank we've you. had this conversation before. I did want to say one thing, uh, none of you have got a long agenda, but I'm very excited about our initiative with the uh, three roadways. Uh, 
one of which being the Heartland Parkway that I, I have been um, uh, talking about since 2010. And uh, what's so important about the Heartland Parkway, and I think it's really um, critical that we get the message out to the public. Now that is the roadway that would go from somewhere in Collier County up through the middle of the state all the way to the Polk Parkway. So it, it, it would help with the traffic congestion on I-75 that we have. But how important that is, hurricane evacuation routes, we need another one. Because right now, when you look at 75, 95, and the turnpike, it becomes parking lots. Um, secondly, we need uh, broadband access to the center of the state. Um, even though Benita's got everything you need, but when we've got rural Yes areas, and no. Well, right. <coughs> in that regard. As, as, right, two years ago we found that out the hard way, but that's right. primarily yes, but not absolutely yes. And we, you know, those kind of things are going to be important for the center of the state, which is the poorest area in the state. We need to help it develop and grow uh, so that they be, can become economically sustainable. But, and most importantly, what I love about that parkway, what I really think we need to focus on is building a bike path along it. My dream is that, that someone can ride a bicycle from Collier County, Lee County, to Orlando and along that route. And I think uh, there's a lot of concern being expressed by the environmental community that the, the, the three roadways we're talking about are you know, not environmentally um, the right thing to do for the state. My response is that we will not do anything that would hurt our environment. And road building has become, uh, the technology has changed to a great, a great deal, so that whatever we do will be done um, in an in a, in a, in a environmentally sustainable manner. But I think it's important for those of us who are way down here in the south to be able to get to the north and to have another uh, route is critical. So, you know, let's keep an eye on that. And it would be a toll road, so this would not be a burden on the taxpayer. We have the we could borrow the money at our AAA bond rating and pay it back through tolls. So I'm very excited about that. And then one other thing, I don't know what's going to happen with the gaming compact. You know, I have been on the record uh, supporting the initiatives that the citizens of Benita have voted for uh, in terms of the gaming issues with the Benita dog track. Um, I'm not sure where that's going to go. Uh, but I think it's going to be a, a big issue that we'll discuss this year, and I'll, you know, be willing to hear from you how you see that uh, unfolding. Thank you so much, Amy. Did you have something else? I, I just said that I, we have a long list of uh, legislative priorities, but some of them are general enough that I think they would have traction all over the mm -hmm. state, and certainly anything having to do with water would be one of them. But since you did mention these um, multimodal kinds of activities along that. Uh, third uh, byway, we are talking and trying to engage uh, powers that be for the Sun Trail, which you probably are familiar with. Mm -hmm. So we are, I think Benita has two proposed potential routes. So I don't know if we're going to need the state at any time, but if, you know, if you, if we are really on board to get those um, bike and pedestrian paths, I think that would help us um, one of them is along the right of way for the railroad, so we need a lot, of, a lot of work there. But I know that there's been a lot of effort by both Benita and Estero to try to get that moving along. I mean, it's a very long project, but we shouldn't lose sight of that. I think I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. And I hear from so many of uh, my constituents, you know, I like to say that if I go to a, a function and I say, how many people in the room are cyclists, half the people raise their hand, and I'll say, how many people hate cyclists and the other people, the other half raised their hand because of the, of the problems with uh, drivers, distracted driving and cyclists. So that if we can provide cyclists with um, uh, safe alternatives to sharing the road in, in, you know, in a trail system, I think that's a win-win for everybody. And I know uh, FDOT is looking at that as well. And, you know, it'll just make our, our, our state safer and healthier at the same time. Zero fatalities. Exactly. That's, I mean, that's our goal because we have way too many. Thank you for all that you do. I really well, thank you for being a, a partner in, in everything we do. Thank you. Amy. Greg? Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming down. Uh, I guess I'm going to be the, uh, the guy that points out the obvious, like the mayor says every once in a while. 
I guess my biggest question is, is for three years, I've been on council for four years now, for three years I've been going up to Tallahassee asking for things. Things that are near and dear to Benita Springs, things that we've needed to hear in Benita Springs. Third hardest hit in the, in the state of Florida when it comes to it. And granted, we know that Stoneman Douglas happened and Parkland got, it got shifted from Hurricane Irma to Parkland, which they deserve all they, that they got from the Senate. But you know what? We're still suffering here three years later. And what, and I've asked every year, either from you or from other representatives or other senators, what can we do to help support you so we get our needs and wants fulfilled? You know, you, you were part of the senior leadership of that, and when you don't get it fulfilled, that, that speaks volumes to me. If we need to go see Senator Bradley, or we need to go see Senator X, Y, and Z, or we need to go see, you know, the speaker or, or the leadership, we're not afraid to take it on the road. We, we go up every year with Ashley and with, uh, <clears throat> with Carol, and, and we walk the halls, but we walk the halls to people here, locally, and, and obviously the last three years, that's not working. We need to go to you and to the, to the House of Representatives to say, who else can we talk to? So they're not just hearing it from Senator Pasadoma, or they're not hearing it, hearing it from Representative Rodriguez, they're hearing it from Senator Bradley from wherever or from whoever we need that from you i mean we we're asking you for help we're asking for help back to say where can else can we go we just don't want it to be a local issue water is a statewide issue water for us since it's coming down from you know north of estero or even from the center of the state it can be an okeechobee problem also which if we got to go talk to the people in okeechobee or to the representatives we're not afraid to do that i know the mayor myself councilman forbes uh, Mr. O'Flynn, everybody here will go talk to somebody if we need to, if we think it's going to work. Uh, I just, that's my biggest hurdle or my biggest uh, knock is that we've been up there. I know I've been up there numerous times over the last three years and it just seems like brick wall after brick wall. And I know you're doing your part and with you being senior leadership and last year with, uh, with Representative Caldwell being senior <clears throat> leadership and now we got uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez on there, Representative Rodriguez, you know, it's just, it just seems like we keep asking and keep asking and get nothing and nothing, and nothing. And I just keep going back to, I mean, we did thumb drives, we did presentations at the, at the committees, third hardest hit, I hate to keep saying it, and we got nothing. Not, not one skinny dime. And it's just, you know, and we keep paying our taxes every year to the people in Tallahassee and, and to the county and still get nothing. And we go to the local delegation at the, at, you know, coming up in October, and last year it was in January, and we get nothing. Just tell us what else we got to do. If we got to go to a local delegation in Sarasota, I'm sure the mayor, myself, any of us will take time off and do it. So we just, just help us out, or tell Carol and Ashley, you know, point them in it, or or Arlene, or as you say, you text the mayor, or call call somebody. I mean, we just, you know, with everything you hear, we're we're dealing with stormwater management, and so we just need some other help if we can. Please. Yeah, and I, you know, I understand your frustration because I was, I'm as frustrated as you are. And it's, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to pinpoint how, you know, people talk about budgets like making Swiss cheese or sausage or whatever. And um, how many projects get funded? There were a lot of water projects. Um, I thought this was the year for Benita. It, you know, I was right there and boom, it was gone. Um, but it, we'll get there. I, I'm pretty confident we'll get there. And I, you know, uh, Rep. Rodriguez and I have talked about it, and we're both concerned about it. And it's like everything, you, you just don't know. It's ne nothing's a given. I mean, I, I heard comments, well, Benita, they're a rich city. They don't need it, you know. We hear it too. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and, and, you know, there'll be. Right. Yes, I'm not we, yes. I heard that a lot, um, and I'll tell you that you know the city of Naples has never had a budget item ever in the history, and they're a lot you know a lot older. Uh, they were they were funded for uh, sewer uh, funding because there was a pot of sewer money available. So the problem is you don't know where the funds are going to be available when you file your budget request, and we don't know either because. It's all an allocation that are agreed upon between the House and the Senate. So they just happen to have the money there. And the city, just like we just happen to have some money here on the buyout. 
And yeah. Benita's the only one that's looking for it. And so it's really looking good that Benita is going to get some of that funding. So I, that's not a... a no, and, and I understand. Yeah. I guess my thing is, is in doing, you know, jobs around the, in my lifetime. It's just my thing is if we go talk to enough people and then sooner or later they start regurgitating what we're saying, not only is it Senator Pasadena saying, yeah, right. Benita may be rich, but we've got one of the lowest millages out there. We're not taxing our people to death. We're, we're looking for help somewhere else. And then if Senator Bradley says that, then if Senator, you know, Richter gets back in this game some other time and he says it, you know, I mean, that's how long we've been going up that's there. That's Richter, we can do it. Well, that's what I mean. That's how long we, I've been going up there right. and, and wanting these, and asking these ass, you know, and if, you know, if, uh, yeah, and it's going to be a, a tighter budget year, and, and I'm not sure where where we're going to go. And, and you know, I know you've all done the right things. You've got good consultants that are helping you. Um, in fact, Carol was driving me crazy. I think she was in my office more than I was. Um, <laughs> so we're, let's c continue to work together. You're you're not doing anything wrong. It's just happening to be in the sort of the right place at the right time, the right budget silo with the right dollars available. And, you know, we'll get there. All right. Thank you for coming down. I appreciate it. And Thank all you, you do. Thank you. Laura? Yeah, it's always a pleasure to see you and to hear from you. And appreciate all your efforts and what you do for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Mike? Thanks for coming down. Fred? Uh-oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, now you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm Fred. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually, uh, water's going to be big because I know the uh, Port of Lagos Cities, that's one of their big legislative asks they, they want to have a inventory of how much the grand total money we need to spend on water and we're not really spending as much on water as we should have to bore you with a little statistic it came out in the meeting remember how we're boasting about how much we've got and DeSantis did a great job in the legislature we're actually spending the same amount of money <clears throat> with about a what a 98 billion dollar budget that state spent in 2005 with a tooth with a 25 billion dollar budget so and that's not your fault that's just a, a sign of the times i guess yeah just you know, one thing that i like to point out too is when you look at our state budget um fully 43 percent of our state budget is health care 43 percent um 27 percent is education pre-k through 12 and higher ed so that doesn't leave a whole lot for the rest of um, our spending initiatives. So with that uh, leftover dollars, we have all the water projects, public safety, operation of government, transportation, uh, one of the most underfunded uh, areas of our state budget that, uh, that it troubles me greatly is our corrections. They are, they haven't, received additional dollars and as long as I've been in the legislature, people, you know, so we have our prisons with populations that, and not enough people take care of them. So um, the reality is we are trying to do a lot with, even though we may have an increase in dollars, so do the costs increase. And I know that we have not spent the kind of dollars we knew, needed to on water. The, the question is, and the hard job that we have is where do we take it from? Right. And how do we, you, you know, how do we, we do have some, so I believe we have some fat in the budget. We probably have some projects that we're funding that we shouldn't, but we need to go through them. Um, so, I, yeah, and I, I know you probably, you want to get rid of me, right? No, <laughs> no, heck no. You kidding me? We're getting ready to pin you down. Uh, <laughs> no. I was going to ask one other thing. Perhaps Ashley and Carol could put together, a, because I think Greg had a great idea, a list of other people that we need to talk to when we're on these trips other than our delegation because we most of them know us anyway right well that's a good point um, and, and perhaps they could put it together and show it to you and Ray and you could add to it or take some off because we want to go to the ones that we can hit pay dirt with so to speak right yeah no thank, thank you Fred and I, and I guess I would add you know kind of <clears throat> Uh, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for all you do. And I know, obviously, how serious you take this and how powerful you are up in Tallahassee now and more power to come. But that's given through leadership and trust and respect, and you're very well thought of. And we're blessed to have you as our state senator. 
And as you know, um, we do come up to Tallahassee, and I, I think you know that I have a daughter that is brand new to Florida State University. Oh gosh, we'll see him and I have a four-cylinder car out there that gets pretty good gas. But dovetailing on what we said, please, if we need to go to Jacksonville, if we need to go to Pensacola this fall to visit with members that you don't, you know, like you say, you go to Tallahassee, you, you shuffle through the offices, and I've called it in a way and respectfully, but it's almost like speed dating, right? You, you That's come what in, we call every, everything's prearranged, everybody knows who's going to be there. You come in, you say your piece, and then you move along. But I say it to say that we, we can certainly travel around the state. We're very willing to do that. Okay. And if the one, the one ask I would have of you, if you could work with Ashley and Carol on that list, mm -hmm. trust me, we'll, we'll get it done. We'll get her done. We really will. Okay. And thank you very much for being here. Thank you for everything. And uh, we're blessed to call you our state senator, so thank you. Well, th and thanks for the, the partnership, because you guys are, are great to represent. I, I've always said that you don't throw us under the bus all the time like some people, which is really nice. No, no, no. We, we look you in the eye and give you concerns like Greg, and, and I look you in the eye and say, give me a list. Give me a work list. Give me a to-do list, and we'll get it done. Yeah, you got it. All right. Okay. And, and I know Arlene had something, and then if we can do a picture before you okay, leave great. with council, that would be great. Clarify that yes. This that the city has voted on their their number one funding request is the same is the same right. amount the seven hundred fifty thousand to target the area of Benita States Quinn Downs Dean Street mm -hmm. and um, we're working on um, calculating that we've uh, the city has also done additional investments as well and we're approximate a forty three to forty five percent match but we're still working on that that will be very helpful to match for so. sure. So, but, um, and then we're looking at uh, very good point. alternatives yeah. in, yeah. The, in, point. in that area. So we wanted to let you know, we're still working on putting together because the, the city has put additional investments in since last legislative session, but we're still targeting projects within that number one priority area. Okay. Great, the, the uh, matching is very helpful because that's the, number, that's the first thing they ask, what's the match? <laughs> Before they even say, okay, what city? Is the match there? Okay, what city? Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> true. All right, great. Council, anything else for the no. senator? No. Great. No. Please come forward. We can do a picture, and you're welcome to All stay, right. or you're welcome to go enjoy your dinner or your yeah, evening with <laughs> or, or the next three events you have to go to. Yeah. yeah, you're working with Becky, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Where are we? Oh, we're down here? Yeah, down here. All right. Down in the mosh pit. Oh, so you're not And thank you, Ashley. I'm anticipating that list, so thank you very much. Thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah, right now. You, you already know the list, right? <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for being here, Ashley. Give our best to Carol. Thank you, Senator. Okay, we're going to move on now to item C, which is uh, receive a presentation uh, from Kimberly Horn and Associates for Logan Boulevard Landscaping Project, and this is Green Sheet 1909-265. Welcome. Hello. Uh, I'll just give a brief introduction. We have Ed Dean here from Kimley Horn and Associates, and they're going to go through a, a video presentation of the 100% uh, plan for Logan Boulevard, um, show you what it will look like uh, when we go out to bid for the project. We're basically at that point. I'm going to rewind the video here real quick. So you okay. Can see you it. Got your cards. Yes, sir. No kibitzing from the dais. <laughs> well, good evening, Mayor, Council. I appreciate you having me here tonight. Um, as, as he spoke, you know, we are at final design for this project, so really just wanted to give you an update just on really what this is going to look like. And so we, we use a lot of 3D software. Um, and we're going to play the video here in a minute, but just to give you a little context of where we're coming from, this would be coming starting at 
Bonita, Bonita Beach Road heading east toward the new roundabout at Logan Boulevard, and then ultimately heading south down Logan Boulevard. And then we'll, we'll do a, a 180 and kind of come back up the road here at the end of this video. Uh, you can go ahead and play if you'd like. Um, but what you'll see here is, you know, a key focal point for this project is the roundabout itself. We, we have a lot of specimen palms in there, very large and mature as at installation. And as we turn here now and start driving down actual Logan Boulevard, one of the things that we were really challenged with is we've got this one mile straight segment. And how do you break that up visually so that you get this corridor that isn't just feel like this monotonous straight one mile piece. And so you'll see a lot of variations in, in kind of the rhythm with the materials that we're proposing. And you'll see here a lot of, you know, seasonal color. What we're showing in this rendering kind of represents maybe the different interests that you'll get throughout the year. While this video maybe represents all of that, you'll see that kind of pop throughout the different seasons itself. You also will see on the, to the right of the graphic here, which would be on the west side of Logan Boulevard, uh, the, the trail there. And so one of the things that we really wanted to make sure we did is we provided trees on both sides of that trail so that we would, we would give, you know, somebody who's out there using this sidewalk some shade. You know, it's very hot. And so to be able to get trees on both sides of that sidewalk were very important. And we've got some existing utilities, as you'll see there, with those power lines. So it meant, you know, the utilization of some palms there. And then as we get here to the end, you know, this is really a gateway as you're entering from the south. You'll see, again, a lot of specimen palms there kind of creating this entry as you come in that you're seeing here now. Um, and just to kind of give you that overview, again, you can see that sidewalk and how those trees kind of jump on either side. And we're really looking at, you know, how do you create a rhythm down this corridor uh, that, you know, while it is a straight corridor, it might encourage people to slow down a little bit. You know, putting some side friction, as we like to say, with some vegetation up up adjacent to the road helps calm the road a little bit. I noticed you mixed in some New England colors like fall foliage. Is that accurate? <laughs> that, that, that is got accurate. trees that'll look like fall foliage? Well, I wouldn't say it's fall I foliage. It's yellow in there. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually, those are tababuyas, so that's actually a, a flower. So those are, in the springtime will pop a very vibrant bright yellow and the pink. Um, but as you saw there at the roundabout, again, that's, that's really one of the focal points for this project is to really provide some landscaping there that really does make a true statement for that roundabout itself. Right. Is that it? That's all I got. Council, got what are your questions? thoughts, Amy? Um, well, you did a great job. I really appreciate, uh, first of all, I like this mechanism by which you can give us a visual here. And, uh, and I think I understand the concept of what you're trying to advance, and I think you accomplished that. And I think it's really good to have those different uh, feelings as you go down a very straight road, which is probably the, the nightmare for a landscape architect, I think, yeah. to do that, because it, you don't have any natural features to, to make it interesting, and you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. No, great presentation. Hope, to, uh, hope it gets done. Great. Thank you so much, Laura. Great presentation. Thank you. Mike? Looks good. Fred? Outstanding. <laughs> okay, great. Let me know if there's any more fall foliage colors. I'd have to look at that scan once again. <laughs> All right. Any you. oranges or crimson reds or, or whatever those colors are? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, Matt? Maze. Arlene? There's no maize color. Um, maize and blue? Did you see those rankings this week? <laughs> just the, the next steps, I just wanted to kind of touch base. So these guys have, have wrapped up their plans. One, one key thing that we didn't really touch on is uh, there is a partnership with Village Walk. This project has been a partnership with Village Walk all along. And so there is landscaping um, that will also, it's shown in the video, we didn't point it out, but that's along their wall so that you know, we'll be including that in the project as well. But really next steps is we'll be developing the bid package here in the week and uh, putting this thing out to bid and trying to get construction started prior to construction wrapping up, which is going to be a bit of a challenge for us because the construction's going pretty well. Um, but that's where we are, and hopefully we'll be back to you with uh, some apparent low bids here within about a month and a half. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is that the lighting, the, the infrastructure is in the ground to be able to conduits to pole lighting, but that is not part of this scope of work. So they designed the landscape uh, for lighting spacing in the center islands, but that will not be what we'll be installing here. Uh, we're going to take it a little slower and a wait and see approach on street lighting for that corridor. Okay, and you know me, I'm not, and I'm not trying to be funny, but is any of that bureaucratic or is that 
um, strategic? No, it's, it's strategic. It's, it's a corridor that hasn't been lit. It is close to, to homes. Uh, the Streetlight Committee took a look at it and really recommended to uh, you know, lay the best groundwork we can, which we have. There's, there's conduits all over the place um, for future lighting. But to, to see after the road opens whether you know, the, there is a pent up demand or, or not. There will be lighting, though, um, for safety reasons right at the roundabout approach itself. Great. Wonderful. Council, anything else? Great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. We're going to move on now um, to mayor and council member items. Item A is the discussion on stormwater utility. I um, introduced this, and this is green sheet 1909-273, and I'll just read um, background. On July 17, 2019, City Council adopted Ordinance 19-05, creating a stormwater utility and collection method. On September 9, 2019, City Council will be discussing the adoption of a stormwater utility fee. And as much as anything, because this was the only council meeting prior to those meetings, I just wanted to kind of get an update on where we are uh, with things. and. Um, did you have some information, Arlene? That well, additionally, so you had said that you want an opportunity for the public to have one more. Yes, yeah, certainly, policy. right, absolutely. As you know, this is a policy decision of the city council. It asked us to provide you with some additional information and to, to clarify. Yes, the operational items that were discussed in the portion of stormwater utility, we have placed that in the upcoming budget as well. That's coming forward to you, but there was an additional, approximately five hundred thousand or so, that was looked at as additional capital for capital improvement projects that you were looking at so that was one of the questions that was referred to so the proposed operating budget does include those items that were just that were brought forward to you as the discussion as whether or not what to move forward with the stormwater utility um, it was mentioned in the 10-year plan and I'll have Matt clarify this but in the 10-year plan you have approximately 28 million is that correct in in 10 years in the current proposed CIP, you have about $28 million for, you know, various stormwater related projects. Um, it is, it was mentioned, there's two portions to this mechanism. First is, is that you all have adopted the actual mechanism of stormwater utility. What you have not adopted is the fee. The fee is what you'll be discussing on September 9th. The mechanism of actually creating the utility does provide you opportunity for looking at special areas that you may want to impose a fee on in the future. Um, that's not part of the discussion on the on the ninth. The ninth is a discussion of a citywide fee that you would be looking at. Um, letters were sent out to every property owner within the city um, explaining what the potential rates could be depending on the type of property owner they were. Um, as of a few days ago there was some discussion with our consultant Stantec about uh, questions that were received about individual lots that are owned by mobile home uh, that have a mobile home on them so on Monday they'll be bringing a proposed adjustment as well as you know the condos were at the point that were at a point I'll, I'll let Matt explain the ERUs the equivalent rates but so, so every ERU was was based on 4,500 square foot home single family home and uh, other commercial was based on actual and so with condominiums you know a rate a reduction rate um, because they're not you know all of that size of 40 percent was applied and I think the the recommendation that they'll be bringing forward is somewhere around 60 percent for uh, individually owned mobile home lots to, to address the concerns I think someone spoke about it here mm -hmm. earlier this morning or this afternoon so they'll be bringing an adjustment to you on the ninth for that rate for consideration for consideration right. okay uh, um, Fred do you have something? Well, I, I, I would like to have somebody say, what is the taxes in Naples? And it, what is the taxes in Estero, the tax rate? Because I think public comment was saying that we're high, and I think we're lower than both those, aren't we? The, not Estero. The, are you just the ad valorem? Are you talking about the you I'm talking utility about ad valorem. Ad valorem? Yeah. We can, I was going to say, and we can certainly have that information or somebody could look it up quickly um, before, you know, yeah. we can talk about it tonight or certainly at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that I'm, we looking, I'm looking it up right now if you guys want to keep. Yeah, but I think you were mentioning, I think it was Wyatt. 
um, the gentleman, I didn't catch his last name, but he said that Naples was around $200. Oh, that was for the, for the that storm was, water, the storm water utility. The fee, yeah. That's, is that what he's talking about? No? Is that what you're talking about? I think Council No, no, no. That, I heard two things. I heard one guy get up and say that small businesses were being taxed so much more in Benita than other places, and I wanted to know how does it compare? Because he specifically was talking about Estero and Naples, I thought. But I, I know our, our the city of Naples millage rate is one point one eight zero zero. Okay. One one say it again. One point one eight zero zero. And we're point eight. Point eight three. Eight one seven three, I think. Eight one seven three. And what's hysteria? Their website's slower than ours. <laughs> How are commercial properties, are they still a regular property tax? Like whatever their appraised, how, how do we tax commercial properties? Like their appraised? Just their appraised value? Their appraised value. Okay. For Ad Valorem. Ad Valorem, the, the rules regarding Ad Valorem are set by the state. Mm -hmm. So it just applies and then there's appraisal criteria for varieties. It's usually the homes and the homeown exceptions and stuff that sort of skews that number in favor of single family dwellings. Right, so for example, we kept our millage rate the same for the seventh consecutive year, but the property values went up. So that's, you know, seven or $800,000 that we got additionally by keeping our millage rate where it is. Um, and, you know, this mechanism here, which I expressed some concerns on initially, the question is not whether we need stormwater and attention, paying attention to stormwater. It's the mechanism of how we pay for it. And we can apply a new tax or a fee or whatever we want to call it on our citizens, or we can look at paying for it ourselves. And when we pay for it ourselves, we're looking for about a million and a half dollars, um, is my understanding. And um, I'll, you know, we can drill down on the numbers tonight or. More than anything, I wanted to get an update on where we were. I know we, like I, somebody mentioned, some FEMA money has come in. Is That's correct, right? Correct. What, that was received a couple of weeks back. Yes. Yeah. yes, we brought it back to you. And what was that amount, Arlene, or was it a few different checks? Or Yes, the total we've received to date is $7.2 million in reimbursements. 7.2? In re total, that's a total of what we've received. We've been reimbursed? That was up from three not too well, long ago. If you remember, three was the last check that we received. We've previously had another check for one and a half that we brought before that and another million. <laughs> so the to total received of all the amendments that you've had is 7.2 million. As of the three, the three million that we just got a couple of meetings ago brought us to the 7.2. Right. And so we roughly were out eight plus. Yes. And we've received seven plus million back. Correct. And it, but, but when we were out the eight, we had spent more than the eight to be out the eight because we spent some money we had to spend because Irma that was either not reimbursable or that percentage kept growing from the 100% to what was it, 90, and then it got to a different. Mm -hmm. So how much did we really spend because of Irma, roughly? <laughs> I'm gonna ask Ann Wright to come forward to see. Hello, Ann. After the reimbursement, Ann Wright, finance director, after the reimbursements that we anticipate, it's going to be close, to a little over 700,000. Another 700. No, yeah, yeah, that, that will be the share that we won't be reimbursed for. Oh. Okay. So in total, 8.2 million, and we're, we're no, no, expecting I'm not it. talking about to 10% or 15 or whatever. I'm talking about we had to spend some money because of Irma that was not even eligible for FEMA reimbursement. That's what I was always told, that the real okay, so cost of Irma was a whole lot more than what... What was the total cost that Irma cost yeah. the city? About $8.3, $8.4 million. But we had very little that was not, that was not, that we did not submit for reimbursement. Okay, good. Where did you get 12? I thought we heard at one point at one yeah, time. Yeah, Amy, I, and then Greg. I just Greg. want to follow up to a previous uh, question that we brought up because I just happen to have this because I've always been curious about this. And if the commercial properties are taxed at their appraised value, 
from the Lake County um, Tax uh, Authority, we have, if, if, you're, if your commercial property is, is appraised at a million, you're paying the city $817. If you're two million, you're, you're paying it you know, twice that. So they get, you're paying the city $1,634. And here it says that there are 207 units who are greater than $2 million, all right? And 86% of our, of our taxing units pay less than $350 to the city. 86%, that's a pretty amazing number, I think. This might be a little, I think, um, this, was, this might be a little dated, but I think the percentage are probably correct. So I would like to have a discussion with, the person's name was Wayne or something? The one that came up and said that we're taxed too much or something. I've forgotten his I name, but. Not last name. I, I've forgotten his last name, but I, I, I really Magnus. don't under, I don't think that's supported by the facts, is what I, my opinion. And maybe we can get some information out. Because if they're only paying, paying us, you know, $1,600 for a commercial property, if their assessment is, you know, appraised value is $2 million. And some of this is our residential. And provided, we got this off the Lee County. I ask for this every time we have the budget. Um, so I do agree that we have changed some of our, uh, like our communication tax, so they're paying more that way. Most of the other th taxation goes to Lee County, the school district, you know, the mosquito control, you know, whatever, you know, the other line items. But it's not, we only pay 5% of their tax bill comes to here. So <clears throat> I think we should have our community development department respond to that because I don't think it's correct. Well, and additionally, the, the individual is making the point that we keep changing our mind on what to build and what not to build. And then, so it becomes difficult to deal with as a whole. Is it going to be a tax? Is it going to be assessment? What's going to be the limit? And then you even point out in your discussion of commercial and then some are residential and commercial, the way that we're going to figure out how much a person has to pay is absurdly complicated. And I really like the rule of just keep it simple. I mean, because it becomes like, what if I then say, well, I just tore up my driveway, come out and reassess me. It becomes really crazy the way, you know, you're, you're going to tell people, because right now, a lot of people are very confused. I got so many emails that just didn't grasp what we're talking about as the storm um, water management fee assessment. So I think it'd be helpful if we give, a, you know, just encapsulate exactly what it is so that people understand it. Preach into the choir. Mm -hmm. but, Amen. But do, isn't that the purpose of the public hearing that we're having on the 9th to describe this? And, but if we but, could, but, but, if we could define it now we, so they we know. do have, we already, it is defined. I think if you look at the, at the, you know, the, the notice, it tells you exactly how it goes. That's why it's, if you're a single family, it's $50. If you're, you know, a multiple family, you take 40% of that, which will give you whatever that is. I mean, there's nothing more, I mean, it's one line basically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but maybe we haven't done a good job about communicating it. But I think our multiple public hearings and discussions from our, our uh, consultant, it is definitely a user fee. It is definitely asking for additional funds to come from property owners. So we can't change that. Um, <coughs> but I, I do think that if there, if there is confusion, you know, we need to communicate more. But I don't think, I, I don't see how it's confusing. Maybe it's all the words that are in addition to this. I'm just saying the emails that I've received uh -huh. are just, I mean, people think it's one attacks, and then I think it is also. But, and two, that it's just $50. It's just going to be $50. Mm -hmm. And that is not the case. Well, it's the case for this year. It's the case it's for, for this year. year. <laughs> but you could say that about the taxes every, mm -hmm. every year. The ta our millage is just, one eight or eight one, eight one seven three you know next year it could be nine eight it could be whatever because i know when uh 
Councilman Gibson brought it up and we started talking about this at the budget hearings, we were gonna go up 10%, 20%. We're gonna go above a dollar to fund these things. And we decided not to. Uh, my only question is, is kind of back to Matt a little bit and a little bit to Arlene and probably Ann while well, they are still in there. Two things. One, you show, you made a comment, Matt, that we have um, $28 million in the CIP over the next 10 years, ten five years? years. Ten. 10 years. 10 years. Does it, what does it allocate as a funding mechanism? A stormwater assessment or is it done by ad valorem or it has no funding mechanism whatsoever? It's just what we'd like to have. <clears throat> it, it, excuse me. It runs, it does not identify a stormwater utility as a funding mechanism. Okay. Um, it does have multiple sources identified. Some of them are general fund. Some of them are grant proceeds from the hazard mitigation grants that we've applied through FEMA. Uh, and some of them are <clears throat> assumptions even from the state legislature in terms of appropriation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's variable funding sources. The one funding source that is not contemplated is your stormwater utility. Okay. Um, yeah, if you recall the last um, budget meeting, we were asked to re reinstate the 750000 that we didn't receive the last fiscal year. And then, uh, you know, there's approximately $9 million or a million, nine million nine hundred from the anticipation of local mitigation strategy funding grants, grant applications that we apply for. And just for the record, the proposed Astero millage rate, uh, which we, I think, vote on next week, is 0 0.763 mils. So they're just under us. Um, my next question um, is kind of towards Arlene and, and Ann. If this, on when or on Monday the 9th, if the stormwater assessment, we decide not to fund it, or fund that fee, where would we get those funds in the budget? Would they come from the 7.2 million or from un unassigned fund balances, we would have to transfer it into those projects that we would need to do, whether it be maintenance or any type of capital projects for the next fiscal year. And Greg, not you're very good on the mic, oh. but I do see some somebody Sorry. on the mic. Yeah, j j my bad. Just, no, that's okay. Just so everybody can hear nice and clear. I don't have that problem. But, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't I usually that. don't have a problem with. No, I know you don't. Yeah, I know you don't, buddy. But thank you. So the current operational standard that you have to date, the this keeping in the same year to year, as, as we proposed to you um, during the budget process, we talked about basically the cost of continuing services. So not doing anything additional. We have that covered in this fiscal year. Um, in the current proposed budget that you're receiving on money without in implementing the stormwater utility. What what the consultants had done was captured what we spend annually for operational costs, maintenance costs, Correct. and then an, an, an estimate of approximately 500000 to be banked towards capital projects. Um, so the accounting of the operational cost and maintenance, we planned on in the proposed budget that we have coming forward to you without the stormwater utility implemented. Um, so you would be looking at the, the addition of that in, if you were to approve the stormwater utility. Would Greg, it, uh, that's it for right now. Mm -hmm. Laura? No. Okay. no? Would, my, Fred? Would it be fair to say that if we go ahead with what's proposed <clears throat> on that assessment, new tax, whatever, that we would be able for a change to do some serious projects every year in addition to the normal maintenance and smaller projects we've been doing in the, for the million and a half. It would be dedicated. They would have to be used for that. So there probably are additional projects at some point we'd want to bring forward to you right. to, to utilize. It wouldn't be necessarily limited to fund flooding. It could be water quality improvements that we are under a mandate for or acquiring a piece of property to do a water project on all that okay okay Amy um, just a question the, the way I understand that it would work is that I mean this year you have identified operational maintenance as one aspect to it and 500,000 for potential capital improvements that we don't really have identified but we in general they could be used in any of this can use in any of those things that we already did that so in the future, as we look at some of these alternatives, we could decide, I mean, we, ought, we, we would need to decide on an annual basis whether we were going to do a project which would require, especially a capital project, 
which would require immediate funding. Mm -hmm. And it could include, like for example, uh, if we get some success at, at the state where we're required to have state mat matching funds, we could use some of this water, uh, this fee, to provide those matching funds. And, uh, and uh, again, my understanding is that one of the reasons why this would be helpful is that when we go to the state or to other entities where we're asking for participation, one of the things they look at is whether you can deliver on your promise for participation. And this would be, in some ways, an ideal mechanism to provide that assurance because it's a dedicated f funding mechanism, me mechanism for a specific purpose. It doesn't go into the general fund and you can pay, you spend it for everything. Uh, we could do it through ad, ad valorem taxes, but of course that would be more, I think it would be difficult to do because we'd have to raise our tax rate so much higher because these projects, as we know, looking at, you know, uh, Beaver's report, what do we have, 10 different projects? There's not one of them that's less than $5 million. So there's, 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 a, there's a lot of things that I think the city will be looking at to mitigate a problem that we have here. From what we understand from Stantec, having the dedicated revenue source is a potential for different additional points within certain grant applications. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, the specific application, but I'm a, that's what I'm. Each we, one would be different. But each year, if we just said we only want to spend five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, then our fee, you know, could be the same every single year. Correct. You have the right to. So the letter that was addressed to the, to the residents was that the max that you'd be looking at is the fifty. But, but honestly, it probably won't go down because of these other issues, which we talk about all the time in our our, our commitment to working on stormwater management. So if we're going to be honest, I can't see it going down or becoming zero once we go down that path. Right. And I, I guess my point would be is, um, look, we've been. We've held firm on the millage. We've held firm on the millage. Uh, we have not increased the millage. Yet, by not increasing the millage, our property values are going up, so we've generated extra money. We've been reimbursed to the tune of about 80% from FEMA or so. Um, we're not flat on our backs financially like we were. We're, we're certainly by no means very, very comfortable. There's always more money in the rainy day fund to be had where people have a comfort level. But um, I indicated this and a few weeks back when we discussed this, I absolutely am 100% committed to creating a stormwater program, but I absolutely am also 100% against charging our citizens to do it. We have the money, and that's where I'm coming from. Mike, do you have anything to add? You've been kind of quiet. Well, I, I mean, I've said it multiple times. I'm against creating a new tax, but it's already been created. I don't think it's the fairest way to go. I, I'm, the ad valorem, the millage rate, is based on property value for a reason, and there's protections in there for people that, you know, the homesteaded, uh, save our homes. So it doesn't al allow such a large increase on people with smaller houses, mobile homes. And they're, they're the ones that, you know, are going to have the most difficult time paying this $50. Most of them are on fixed incomes. Um, you know, the, the one property that I've looked at multiple times, it's a tiny house. It's a one-bedroom house. They're, they're basing this on 4,500 square foot of impervious land. I know she doesn't have that. So why are we still charging her $50, you know, for, because the average, you know, house is 4,500 square foot impervious. And so she's far below that. And this is, uh, I think currently she pays, it's less than $50 to the city in, in taxes. So it's, it's more than doubling what she's paying to the city. So I mean, yeah, you can say it's only $50, but it's more than doubling what she's paying. And yeah, the city's only 5% of the total. It, you know, that business um, analogy that you gave of them paying six, 1600 um, yeah, that, that's only 5%. They're, they're paying, you know, 95% more to other agencies. So, I mean, it, it's a tiny amount to the city, but when they get their tax bill, they see the big tax, they, the total. So it's, it's, it's big numbers. Um, so I, I'm not supportive of doing this at all. So that's where I am. All right. and, and, you know, I'm just going to say real quick, Greg, because, Mike, you, you uh, triggered something. Um, 
that 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 made me th Greg go ahead I'll come no, back to I, it I was just gonna say I mean I I don't disagree with with your analogy, anybody's analogy on this, but in the past, we haven't raised the millage to do these projects. I think this gives us the funding mechanism to do these future projects. I guess that's why I'm so for it, because this board and past boards have failed to either want to raise the millage, either politically or, or socially or whatever, to do these projects that we need. We, in the, and some of it could be our fault for not raising it. Some of it could be our fault for not going up and fighting hard enough to get it from the state. But those things haven't happened. And, and, and that's where I'm feeling, or that's where I'm feeling compelled, that here we are, third hardest hit, like I said, to, to Senator Pasadoma. And over three years, two budget years, we've failed to raise the millage to do certain projects. Now, whether it's politically or, or what we feel, I know we got more money, but you know we got more money going out too on doing things. Uh, as Kathleen said, I don't think in our budget there's a lot of fat, so it's not like that we are, you know, have a lot of money have a lot of money to spend, or we can cut it and you know rob Peter to pay Paul to do these projects. This is just another funding mechanism to get it to us. If we were open to raising the millage by whatever, point one, point two, to like, like Mike wanted to do at the, um, at one of the uh, workshop, budget workshop, then I would, you know, I'd vote against this, but we haven't demonstrated that, which is, you know, in some aspects is good. We haven't been charging our, our constituents to the, to the hilt. But on the second part of it is, is since, you know, Irma came through in 2017, we've done just enough to get by. We haven't done anything extra. And that's where I feel that this stormwater utility will let us either A, give the extra, but even if we don't want to give the extra, what it does, in my opinion, is a neighborhood, whether it be a Bonita Bay, Pelican Landing, uh, Spanish Wells, or even a, uh, uh, what the? IBE. IBE, or I was thinking of one over there, uh, Lakes of San Sushi. If they want to tax themselves and have more protection, whether it's a bigger berm or, or bigger pipes that they want to put underneath the road or underneath driveways, they have that mechanism. Right now, they don't. They would have to either go to Public Works at Matt and say, look, we feel that our driveways are collapsing in, in uh, let's go with uh, in uh, Benita Springs Country Club. It's been neglected over the years. We need to have these culverts cleaned out. Matt, go, the city goes, hey, it's not our it's private roads. You've got to deal with that. So now they can assess themselves. Prior to doing something like this, they cannot assess themselves. They would have to come here hat in hand and say, look, we're flooding in the country club. We need help cleaning the ditches or putting bigger swells in or, or creating an ordinance now instead of when they did it, a 12 inch pipe underneath your, underneath your driveway is good. We need an 18 inch pipe or a 24 inch pipe. Now we're gonna reassess that. That's gonna be a lot more than $50 a year for that, because I just know when city sewer came in to all of us, it was twelve, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars. None of us got to opt out of that. So that that's all I'm looking at. If we would demonstrate that we would raise the taxes if we need to, I'm not saying do it frivolously, but if we identify certain projects in a CPI in the next year, two, three, and we start raising the tax for that, that's one thing. But we have I don't think we've demonstrated that, and that just gives us another mechanism to do it. That's a my two cents. Yeah, no, I appreciate Thank that, you. Greg. Yeah, well, no, absolutely. Thank another, you for that, Laura. Another mechanism would be let's sell some of the properties downtown and get it rolling, and then yeah. we get revenue that way. We made, we, I mean, if you look at um, Ann Wright's numbers, we, uh, our revenues were greater this year. Our expenditures, well, with the, you know, taking out Irma were, were also less. So we made more money, we spent less. And if we develop downtown, we'll get more money in. Let's sell the bamboo property. I, I don't have a problem sale. with that at all. I mean, I, you know, I'm just saying this gives us another mechanism that, that we we haven't sold it. We, I've been up here four years, and <laughs> the mayor's been the mayor for almost four years, and we've been talking about selling it, and I haven't seen one for, for sale sign in it yet. Well, so that's all. Why don't we make that a priority rather than taxing our citizens? And, 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 and I will, I'll just jump in here because I've been very clear with Arlene and Matt. They know where I am down there uh, on downtown. Um, anything and everything that we need to do to blow through what we need to blow through, I, I, I'll, I'll just use my famous word, bureaucracy, and I don't really know that this is. But what I'm saying is 
We're sitting here clearing our throats and the opera goes on. We need to be singing. Yes, Fred. Well, I, I'd like to weigh in on the, uh, I think what we ought to do, first of all, a proposal was made at another council meeting to get somebody to come in and evaluate and all that to propose. I, I would propose that we go out within 30 to 45 days, 60 days max, with an RFP, but we have the right to reject it and see what the, we do. what the marketplace comes in with. And if it's real good, we're gonna know it. If it's not any good, we can reject it and we can probably tweak it a little bit, but I think, and, but I think get DPC's input, but it's not gotta be exactly what they show. These are things we like, but let's see what happens because we don't know till we try it. It's been tried in the past, but that's, I think the last time was a lot of years ago. Derek or Arlene, what would we need to do to open up? And then I'll go to Amy. Let me just, um, the RFP process for our properties downtown. We have an RFP. Well, we have, we have for your, your next meeting, we have two things coming. We have the DPZ form-based code coming with the revision. You all gave us some comments the last time with the revisions. And as council directed, we found a company that already has a state contract, so we don't have to go to RFP that does market analysis and actually uh, has done this for other cities, the city of Jacksonville, um, the Mobile has had city properties that they've walked through the entire process of an RFP process, and they also do the marketing and analysis for you. So we plan on having that at the next meeting as well. At the next meeting, and I'd like to propose, and then Amy, I'll go to you, at the next meeting that we're ready to make a proposal and vote on it. And maybe we wait till the next meeting, but I don't want to wait a lot more meetings and sit here well, and continue to get warmed up. This Amy, go ahead. Yes. I just think I sort of agree with you, but I, we, we have authorized this company to help us to, through the process, and they're the ones that are going to guide us so that we do it in a way that's most efficacious for us and will give us the best results. So I don't think they're going to be ready to tell us how to proceed, right? They're, you're just yes, so, so what, that the, the, this coming meeting was the, to bring you all the proposal from them with the layout of how it, how it would move forward. Okay. That, and they would provide you with the market analysis to tell you the best case scenario of, you know, what type of units you're looking for and what the market holds, residential, commercial, what, what, what you could ask for. And then they have their way of marketing it across the country. That's, well. that's fabulous. Well, and, and I'm going to let them know about my marketing. We're coming into season and we're not going to be on the sidelines. Amy, go ahead. No, I'm just, I, I want to clarify what you're saying, all right? Will they have the market analysis at our next meeting? No, that's, no, no, no that's what's No, this is forward. what they're going to provide. And there'll be some time frame that it'll be recommended to provide this information so that we can make our decision in a reasonable and best practices way. Is that correct? Correct. So correct. Yes. They're, they're bringing, this would be the approval of the proposal. Or we can step up like we're elected to do and push this along at our speed, yeah. not their speed. That's right. And that's all this, the last thing I'll say about it. We're in control, not them. I look forward to working with them, but they don't drag this out until next July and say, we're ready. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to go into this season with a full head of steam. I, I think we could, I think you could do it, and I think we could use that company to help us tweak the proposals that come in because they might say by market analysis, maybe this tenant should be this kind as suggestions and see where we go. We can always reject it. It's not going to cost us very much money to do it, but we at least see where we're at, what the markets, because they're going to tell you what they think is going to work. They're not going to give you something that's going to be a dog, so to speak. Council, anything else on that? That's a dynamite update. Thank you so much. Um, so the next meeting on that will be Monday the 9th at 5.05. No, the, the time was, okay. I'm so used to, I'm so used to saying 5.05 with those, but it is 6 p.m. right here. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for the update. Council, anything else on this? Okay. We're going to move on to item nine, which is the first reading of the following zoning ordinances, and there's no public comment on this. The first is a zoning ordinance of the city of Bonita Springs, Florida, considering a Bonita Lakes Homeowner Association amending zoning ordinance 0410, adding a deviation to allow zero foot side yard setbacks for mechanical equipment for the Bonita Lakes residential plan development located at 
25580 Imperial Parkway, Bonita Springs, Florida, 34135, providing for an effective date. Second one is a zoning ordinance of the city of Bonita Springs, Florida, requesting the granting of a variance from section 4-1894 sub B of the land development code requiring a 25 foot setback from water bodies for an existing structure located at 5951 Carroll Street, Bonita Springs, Florida, 34134 and providing for an effective date. So moved. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. <clears throat> Councilman DeWitt. Aye. Councilwoman Clark. Aye. Mayor Simmons. Aye. Councilman Gibson. Aye. Councilman Forbes. Aye. Councilwoman Carumba. Aye. Great. Thank you. Derek? Uh, I have nothing more on those two items. Is that it? That's it. You're good? Okay. Um, we're going to move on. Let's see. I guess we're down to public comment. Members of the public that would like to speak at this time, please come forward. Did you guys vote? I'm sorry. Clarification. You voted on both of those ordinances? That's what I was saying to you. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Okay, just making sure, buddy. Thank you. John, please, thank you. For the record, my name is John Pano, uh, Bonita Springs Downtown Alliance president and representative of uh, CGT Kayaks here in Bonita Springs. Um, Greg, just one of the things I wanted to point out, you're absolutely right, we were the third hardest hit. What people tend to forget is the road was closed for two years before that. So the downtown merchants not only took the hit from Irma, they're still trying to recover from two years of road closures. So the pressure on the downtown merchants is great to try to recover, and they still need more time to recover. The other thing, um, if we pass a form-based code and get that done, we, that property downtown becomes extremely valuable, extremely attractive to developers, and we can move that property. That's it for the stormwater. Um, as far as uh, item 12B, we're talking about uh, the water quality and dealing with the water quality. They support that 100%. Um, also, I'd like to say a few things. Uh, what folks don't realize, we see bacteria counts and all that. Our river has a colony of thousands of bats that live under the Matheson Bridge. They contribute a lot to the water and what's in it. So when you're looking at the water and you're thinking, oh, there's bacteria in it, yeah, but it's not necessarily human bacteria. So people shouldn't be flipping out about that. We need to do testing to identify the problems in the places and what the actual things are. Uh, our water here in Benita Springs and in South Florida, when I first moved here uh, approximately 15 years ago, uh, I was told don't swim in the fresh water during the summertime. There's amoebas, and you can get brain amoebas, and you can get these other issues. Um, I learned that there were black widow spiders. I learned that there were rattlesnakes and coral snakes and water moccasins and alligators and crocodiles. So um, our water is dangerous, and anybody that's out there playing in our water should remember that no matter what. That's all. And watch out for your swimming pools, because the gators get in there, too, from time to time. Thank you, John. And your uh, bathtub. Yeah, and the bathtub. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Hello again. Good evening. Hello again. Good evening. Um, I want to apologize for not being clear earlier. I'm not the best public speaker, and I have four kids, so sometimes I get my dad voice on, and I'm sorry. Um, but... The point that I wanted to get across is not, has nothing to do with the millage. It's the fact that we've had so many issues on Bonita Beach Road, Old 41. It's been very difficult for businesses to operate. Now we're adding an additional fee or tax that gets passed down to all the businesses. That's another thing that makes it difficult to operate. It's, it's not just $1,600. It's $1,600 on top of X, people who want this, people who want that. That tax bill that has come through with the millage rates where they are and the increase in the value of properties is a big blow that individual business owners have to eat. And now we have the possibility of an additional stormwater tax. I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done, and I thank you guys for addressing it, but we have that. We just got a code enforcement violation for lights that have been sitting out 
for 20 years, wall packs, because they hurt someone's eyes. We have a business meant to protect people's belongings. And now we have a $6,000 bill to go and replace all of these. It, it's getting very difficult. Bonita Springs is earning a reputation among commercial real estate agents. It's a place where it's difficult to do business. That's the point that I wanted to get across. I apologize for not being very clear. And I love the end of what I just heard towards the uh, uh, water management discussion. Um, thank you all very much. I apologize for not being clear. And I apologize for dad voice. Thank You're you. good. I make all kinds of mistakes, and I run these <laughs> meetings, so don't worry about it. I make typos. Thanks, Fran. Fred makes typos. Welcome, Kathy. Well, good evening again. For the record, Kathy McGrath. And as we all know, you cut the meeting a little bit short on the 21st. And I think it was for a good reason you should have attended that, that water thing. And uh, but I, there were a few things I was going to bring up then because, you know, this is my Facebook. I think I've told you this. But first of Old all. Old school Facebook. I love it. Yeah. Well, I don't. This is my Facebook. <laughs> uh, I think we're all so very, very grateful that we were spared the storm. And I want to thank all the local weather affiliates for the local channels because they did an excellent job of explaining. And a lot of people say, oh, they don't know what they're doing. It was iffy, but they laid out every scenario, and they were right on the button. I don't think anyone knew it would stall that long, but they, were, they knew just what it would do. Anyway, <clears throat> the library. I know you, most of y'all were there. How exciting. I mean, we've waited a long time, and we were owed it a long time, and I believe they're going to have, uh, that, that was the ribbon cutting. I believe the grand opening is Saturday, uh, September 14th. So be sure and go there. But, and um, it just goes to show you, you know, more and more people are coming downtown. One thing I was going to bring up, how about this new business downtown, downtown coffee and wine company. As you all, we all have been here for a while know that was the old corner store. Great, just great. Uh, and as far as getting back to the storm again, you know, let's not get complacent because the word is not if, it's when. And sooner or later, we're going to hit. So be prepared. All right, the next thing I want to bring up is the Film Fest, which I'm very proud to be a part of. And it, we have grown so popular that we decided to divide it into two different nights, two different days, excuse me. The, uh, the, we have more and more young people, young filmmakers. So they're going to have their very own gala. The uh, regular gala will be on the 7th. Thursday, 6 o'clock at the Prado, and then on the 9th, Saturday, the young filmmakers will have their own red carpet treatment with all the bells and whistles and all. So, the, as you know, the um, theme this year is Secrets of Bonita, and there's a lot of good prizes. So, everybody who's listening to this, get online and please go ahead and join. And uh, the dates I want. Again, Kathy? Pardon me? The dates again? No, oh, yeah. It's. it's the, it's always the first Thursday. It's the seventh. Thursday the seventh is the champagne red carpet p pictures, and then on the ninth, I believe it's ten o'clock on Saturday morning at the Prado, and they're going to have their their very own gala without the champagne, of course. But it's going to be fun. And let me tell you, these young people, they're they're pretty sharp. Uh, let's see. Uh, I just wondered. I I've, I've been finding iguanas in my yard. I just wonder if anyone else has. We are, yeah. I see them every day. My neighbor said I had one about this big in my driveway. And the last thing I want to say is, you know, we all have a tendency. You guys have a tough job. It's human nature. If you're upset about something or something's wrong, you sh we know it, we show up in force and we speak our mind as well. You should be. But you know, also every once in a while, it'd be kind of nice. I think. Um, to say thank you if you do something that helps someone or even if just thank you. Uh, we had a saying with Pan Am, I'm sure it's pretty common, it takes 10 attaboys to make up for one oh blank 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 blank. <laughs> so folks, you know, don't only always complain or be against something. Once in a while, give them a pat on the back because you deserve it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Very nice. Might be more than 10 depending on what's going on, but that's a good Excuse me? That's very good. It might be more than 10 out of boys, yeah, but right. that's very good. Thank you. Uh, Welcome. Uh, Dwight Essman again. Um, to answer some questions, first of all, I love the discussion tonight. I, I really think you guys had some meaningful discussion. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, there was a lot of confusion over that letter. I'm on a thing called Next Door, and there were a lot of people that did not understand it. 
Um, talking about a reputation, I talked to a neighbor who bought a house here recently who said, you know, Bonita has a reputation as a town that floods. And that's not a reputation we want. No one likes regressive taxes, I don't think, but they tried to compare this fee to the garbage fee. And just because you have a small house or a mobile home, you still pay the garbage fee. And maybe it would be better to have a part of the ad valorem, but it doesn't seem like that happens. Um, and nobody seems to say how they're going to solve this problem if we don't have a stormwater fee. Um, I do believe commercial interest will always come to a town where there are people who want to buy things. And people want to move to a town where it's a nice place to live. And our taxes are so low compared to many other parts of the country. Um, I did hear something that I think needs to be addressed. If a commercial operation has a stormwater management um, system, they should be able to get some sort of discount like a community that has a stormwater management uh, system in place. Um, anyway, thank you all again. It was a great discussion. Thank you very much for your comments. Appreciate you being here. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Look at that shirt. Is that a maze? Is that blue? Blue stripes, maize and Good blue? Day. Welcome. <laughs> uh, Jim Morris. I'm a two-year full-time uh, resident now. And I've um, been coming here since the 60s. And my grandpa built a place over here on Goodwin Street. And I've watched Goodwin Street go from a seashell drive, you know, to being paved, then sewers, then being repaved. And I know my dad, he just passed away about three months ago now. Um, he had come here about 20 years ago. And we got, when they paved it, they at least paved the shoulder to make it a little wider, tried to help on that. You know, because of course, many pedestrians, kids coming. And what we have noticed, we came here, Barbara came here last time, and y'all put up a 30 mile an hour, and appreciate that, that's, that's great. But uh, we still have speeders, and the biggest problem is the drainage in this water discussion. I was in highway construction in Kentucky and, and worked on a lot of this kind of stuff. But uh, we're at the crown of the road is holding the water from being able to go on to the Imperial River. Um, when it rains, these kids going to school are having to get out in the middle of the road to get out of the water. Kids or ladies pushing their children. There's just no sidewalk. There's no way to do it. And there's some ideals I'd like to bounce off somebody that uh, maybe we can do to, to try to address that problem. I know right away is probably the biggest problem you guys have with trying to get a sidewalk on that street. But every street coming into 41, old 41 from Terry to uh, Bonita Beach Road has sidewalks, except for Goodwin. And, uh, I just, I think we need to address that for a safety reason. But other than that, guys, it's, it's something we've been talking about for 40 years, so I don't know that you're, what we're going to do now. No, thank you very much. And um, please, if you have his contact information, we'll set up a time to meet and discuss it further. I appreciate that. You're very thank welcome. You. Thanks for being here tonight. Other members of the public that would like to speak? <laughs> yes, we did. Jim Morris. M -O -R -R -I -S. And, sir, you're welcome to wear maize and blue at the meeting for Matt. It's me again. Hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to I see you. I have been here since 92 in Benita in a mobile home park, and I have really seen a lot. And I know people in every park. I know everybody around. I've helped put people in in our government here to help run it, and I still feel that it is very said if they want to charge somebody $50 that maybe makes 1400 a month, if even that, for this tax that you people are going to put in, and then somebody in a $4 million, or how much are the homes now? Uh, it's ridiculous. I really feel if they're going to put it in, they need, and I also asked, what happens to people that are disabled and really can't get what they really need? I don't get my husband's pension. He died three and a half years ago. And I'm still trying to fight why a woman's supposed to get their husband's pension if it's more when they die. And it's been three and a half years and I'm not getting any help. I lost 3300 a month. So now they want to go and put a $50 on us 
How about some of you that have the big homes, the beautiful places? It doesn't mean nothing to you, but it does mean to a lot of people. And I'll tell you what, if you keep raising my taxes, I have been here since 92, and I'm going to have to go back to Pennsylvania. I helped up there, and I do not like the government. They, they do not help the people up there, and I do go up in the summer. My son is a boss at Hershey at Reese, and it's terrible what they try to do to the people up there. At least some of the insurances here for the old people like us is helping us some. And I hate to have to leave, but I'm telling you, if you think an old person like me should pay 50 and you're in a high rise and have lots of money, I don't think it's fair. And I really feel the people in my park, a lot of them are trying to sell. They can't get hardly anything for an old mobile home. You have to have money to buy it. Nobody's going to go to the bank because we cannot sell a mobile home with a bank. You have to have money either come from up north to come down to buy it. We don't live in homes. And we have a park that tells us what we have to pay for our water, sewer, and what we have to pay for our garbage. And sometimes it's not fair. Some of the parks are paying more than they should. They don't own the park. At least we bought ours and we're about done paying with it. We paid a couple million dollars for a piece of property that really, I know the city would love to get rid of mobile homes, but I'm telling you, a lot of the mobile homes are paying almost the taxes what some homes are here in Bonita. And I know people, I belong to all the clubs, and I'm telling you, please think about how you're going to charge us. If we live in a mobile home and we don't have nothing much, our price, our, our income is low, I really feel that they should consider that if they do put this through. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. God bless you. And thank you for saying what you did because it's true. What happens to all people. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. I can't get that to switch right now, but don't worry. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, on a totally different subject, totally off the wall subject. I drive down Pennsylvania half a dozen times a day. We have new stop signs. They are working. People do stop, people do look, with the exception of some screwballs on bicycles. You can be sitting there stopped, they're coming at you, they don't bother to stop. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed it, but I'm gonna take my camera on my phone and take some pictures because that's just as bad. We talk about cyclists, but the stop signs are for bicycles too. But the others are working just fine. And thanks for doing that. Makes life a little safer. Wonderful. Thank you. Other members of the public that would like to speak? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so we're gonna we're gonna move along to uh, city attorney items. Uh, yes, council, I have two items for you today. Um, I am requesting, this is a follow-up to some prior executive sessions, I'm requesting some further advice uh, concerning pending litigation, um, expenses and settlements in the BG Mine cases. Um, for the record, this would be BG Mine versus City of Bonita Springs, Lee County cases number 17-CA-000381, 17-CA-004036. 18-CA-003465, 18-CA-006017, and First District Court of Appeals case number 1D19-1403. Um, that's the first matter, and the second matter is uh, we're also, I'm also looking for advice concerning expenses and settlement proposals on the WCI Communities and WCI Communities Incorporated. Case number 17-CA3966. We recently wrapped up all day mediations on both those cases. Um, and I do want to talk to you about what the posture of those cases are going forward, um, as, as well as some settlement proposals that have been banded about. Um, we'd be looking to do this the week of the 16th. Um, I am trying to coordinate with uh, Mr. Theriak to make sure he's in town, but probably doing a back-to-back, -back, either before or after one of your existing council meetings that's already set for that week. So 
Uh, I'll be in touch with you shortly as soon as I get his full availability about setting those dates and we'll get it advertised. I'm going to be out of the country from the 13th to the 29th. Okay. I will... Off the grid? Off the grid. <laughs> no, I not say that. Can you take me with Just checking. <laughs> Some of these, I, 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 will look, I will look at alternative dates both before and after. Um, well, the, because... The, I don't know what the, can you just talk to me and then, or no? I can talk to you, but they, they, some of these cases I think might be, it might be better off to you guys have the ability to have that conversation amongst each other. So I'll look at some dates outside that window and see if uh, there's something we can work out. It's the first time in three and a half years I've taken a vacation. <laughs> Very inconvenient. <laughs> and Rooney's trying to mess with it, see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's up. That's yeah, no, I know. It, have a wonderful That's trip, Amy. Yeah. Did you have another question on that? No, or no. Anybody else for Derek on that point? Okay, Derek, any other items? Nope, uh, that's it for me. Okay, fantastic. City manager items, Arlene and Matt. The first item we have before you is the approval of the um, interlocal agreement regarding distribution um, of the local tax, uh, fuel tax. And we've discussed this before. This is uh, Lee County has asked that all of the jurisdictions be on one formula. It's the same formula that we, the city, has been under. Um, the second page gives you a profile of each of the jurisdictions and the percent change. Um, there was minimal uh, change. What we were requesting was 0.01% uh, change in the city's revenues of this. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, there's been a motion to approve and a second. Is there further discussion, Council? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Carumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. The second item before you, I'm going to have Matt Feeney introduce to you. Good evening, uh, City Council. Uh, before you is a proposal from FGCU. Uh, previously, <laughs> you may recall, City Council asked that um, we coordinate with the Village of Estero as well as Florida Gulf Coast University regarding some bacteria testing they're doing in response to some um, monitoring observations that show high levels uh, in the Estero River. Uh, we also have the same condition in Spring Creek as well as the Imperial River. So I did meet with uh, Dr. Duke. I, I do extend his apologies. Unfortunately, he had to teach a class this evening, so he wasn't able to stay for the whole meeting. Um, but basically, we, we met, we talked about the unique conditions here in Bonita Springs. Uh, he worked up a protocol and a proposal uh, for about $30,000, uh, 30162 to be exact, uh, to conduct uh, DNA testing and source testing of uh, what is causing some of these high-level bacteria. So this should give us a better insight as to what the sources might be, whether they're human or birds or bats or, mm. or something in between. Uh, and that will point us in the direction of what the next steps would be. Bigfoot. <laughs> We did budget um, twenty-five thousand in, in the you know upcoming budget, so this is a little bit, a little bit more, but but not significantly more. So we might be coming in the future with a budget amendment. Okay, council. Yeah, Amy. I think it was really interesting to see his proposal, what he's doing, and I and so I was uh, intrigued by the science, uh, the scientific approach, but I was a little confused. Will the final report be like a year from now, or will we have interim reports? That's I didn't quite follow it in the verbiage. Um, <clears throat> I need to talk to you a little more in depth, but uh, basically it looks like it, you know, they want to capture a dry season and a wet season. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, they'll be working on uh, a report that you'll get kind of mid-year, you know, to start to understand. So I think you're going to get some periodic progress reports from them. The final, final report, you know, and this is contemplated at a, the conclusion of a year, but I think you're going to have whatever results we start to see coming much sooner than that. Well, I, I very much appreciate that you made the effort here because as we've had many months of discussions on this topic I think is a step in the right direction Greg did you have something on this no my only question was is uh, it's going to be in next budget year so yeah okay Fred did you have something yeah I, I did uh, like for example <clears throat> can we also test Oak Creek Th this proposal is specific to to where we had those elevated levels and it does not include Oak Creek oh are we testing the Imperial at the headwater and the midway and then all the way out to the bay mouth? 
I, unfortunately, I don't have the, the doctor here. It, it is developed based on where those elevated levels were monitored. Uh, those were monitoring the, the data really comes from uh, the Lee County Department of Natural Resources, so that's kind of the jumping off point. They do include um, utilization of boats and kayaks to, you know, to catch some other areas, but, you know, kind of the, the framework, so to speak, is where those, um, you know, year in, year out high levels have been observed through the Lee County monitoring program that's been going on Good. in our area. Okay. Council, Good. anything else? So moved. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Simmons? Aye. Councilman Gibson? Aye. Councilman Forbes? Aye. Councilwoman Karumba? Aye. Councilman DeWitt? Aye. Councilwoman Carr? Aye. Okay, great. Anything else? Um, yes. So, uh, one of the other things I'd like to give up is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., the staff will be here as an open house for any of the remaining folks who have additional items to turn in for the buyout program. Mm. We, we are going to be submitting our application at least 10 days prior to the application deadline as we receive more points for that. So we're gonna be cutting off our application period sometime at the end of next week. But tomorrow evening staff will be here. We will have bilingual staff here as well to help anyone with any questions they have on the program, helping them get their last minute documentation and information into us. Um, and we'll be continuing to work with those residents through the application period, but we are going to close our application period early in order to be able to receive those additional points. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is the mayor and I had discussed, but to bring it before council is last time we scheduled our zoning board meeting on the same day as city council instead of having one on the Monday. Um, just wanted to make sure as a consensus we will continue that it seems to provide a better attendance level for everybody's and their scheduling. The is that okay with everybody as a rule? I mean, it's it's a imperfect rule, but for now we'll go with it and see if it's yeah okay. So we'll be advising through community development that the Monday is no longer, we're gonna be going on the Wednesdays as well. Um, also, before you all, we, we did briefly discussed um, the proposal we bring forward for um, the RFP for the downtown. The group that if should we decide to move forward with them would want to immediately have some individual meetings. I will get with you, Councilman Cromer, because they were looking to schedule them mid-September to get a jump start on it, because we'll be bringing the proposal on September 18th. But if we can maybe have a conversation scheduled before or after, we'll work to do that so they, because they wanted individual comments from you all. Great. Fantastic. Wonderful. Great job. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay, Dynamite. Good work. Okay, we're going to move on now to Mayor and Council Member Reports. Amy. Um, I have a, well, I just want to follow up to the discussion earlier with the gentleman came up twice to give a cut um, in the public hearing. I, interpreting what he was saying, I think he was commenting primarily on I think the extent of regulations, I mean, he talked about a lot of different things. Could we have some follow-up in an assessment of how the regulations that we have impact our businesses? And I know the one he was talking about was lighting, and I kind of understand that. And we have dark, we have a, a dark, dark sky, sky initiative, I, and maybe that's how it, it impacted him. But could we just get a, a, a report on that? Um, and I have a question about the state of emergency. Is that still operating? Do we have to rescind that or what? The one that we voted it, on? It'll expire on its own in seven days. So this Saturday it'll expire. So it'll expire automatically, okay, because I think that's a good idea. Um, and I just want to report that I did attend a transportation conference that was sponsored by the Horizon Council, which uh, reflected some of the work that Senator, uh, some of the items that Senator Pasadoma mentioned, um, including, and the, it was, uh, uh, attended by F. Dot people and uh, what was the other one? Uh, the railroad. Chair, 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 is he from? Is he Lee from County. F. Dot? Lee County. Lee County, and there was a railroad person and the um, airline thing. So it was it was really interesting because I think it emphasized the fact that um, <coughs> these entities are refocusing some of their attention on what we call complete streets. So I think we're on the right track with our transportation projects. Um, but I also, one of the things that was, one of the things that was really interesting was the railroad person representative who was a salesperson. And I, maybe you all are already aware of that, but evidently the Seminole Railroad has bought out that interest of C CSX along the railroad. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's, going to help us in our interest in doing the Sun Trail, but hopefully if we can get some of the state uh, people involved, that maybe we can make some success there. 
Um, and let me see, that's for the transportation. Uh, I just want to mention that September 11th um, is Patriots Day, and um, maybe you're going to mention that. It's at 6, 6 uh, p.m. at the fire station downtown, and I hope everybody... Uh, downtown? The fire station, right... Where, where they have, and we had moved the um, um, monument. monument there, so it's it's really good that we're going to have this. I hope we all can attend, um, and of course, you know my my uh, best caring uh, wishes are extended to the people of the Bahamas. Uh, I know we didn't have that kind of de devastation, but those of us who have ex experienced ha hurricanes and had issues with the infrastructure, you know, we, we really empathize them in, in a sincere way. Um, and just a point of, of uh, appreciation that the exhaust fan has been turned off again. So I don't know if that's a permanent thing, so that it really helps with uh, my hearing, uh, which after three and a half years, I don't know why we didn't figure out how to turn it off before, but it really helps and I really appreciate that. Um, and I think that's it for me. Great, thank you very much, Amy. Greg? Uh, no, I just want to say uh, my hearts and prayers go out to the people of the Bahamas. Uh, I witnessed it firsthand uh, last year with uh, Mexico Beats and Panama City, so I kind of know what they're going through. So uh, my heart and prayers go out to them, and, and uh, Godspeed to them. Hopefully they get some help sooner than later. And the other thing is, Amy touched on it, is uh, September 11th is coming up. It's 6 o'clock at Station 1 on Old 41 27490. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow with Laura and the city about what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. I know we're planning on shutting the road down, just one lane on Pennsylvania for uh, demonstration and for overflow of a uh, person, of uh, people. And that's it, sir. Thanks, Greg. Laura? Um, my heart and, and uh, prayers go to the folks in Bahamas as well. And perhaps to, let's hope next meeting we don't have any more prayers for the uh, uh, Dorian uh, impact. And I'd also like to say that Stephen Slakta was appointed to the Fire Commission Board. So our prior District 3 um, City Council member is now on the Fire Commission Board. Great. Thank you very much, Laura. Mike? I've um, just also been sending prayers to uh, Bahamas, and otherwise I'm good. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Mike. Fred? Yeah, I, I would like to make these real quick. Number one, at the next meeting, can uh, our finance department give us what our reserve balance was before Irma and what it was afterwards. Because I, I'm positive we spent money because of Irma that was not counted in those figures, but that'll, that'll come up with some. Second thing, is it possible at the meeting where we talk about the stormwater assessment, tax, whatever? Monday we, night. Yeah, Monday night. night. Can we have a good, hard, crisp number for trailers, what they're, what they're gonna pay? Secondly, I want to know, is it possible? And Fred, I'm sorry, but, and condominiums, because there's some confusion there. Yeah, there's, yeah, right. And then, is it possible at that meeting, could we implement that if your home is, I'm just pulling a number out of there, 950 square feet or less, then instead of the 50 bucks, it might be 25 or something more reasonable. And that, and because most homes that are that small are also on the lower end of the, the appraised value too, unless they're on a million dollar property with a little house. But, so I just want, we don't have to, you can just tell me after the meeting, but I wanted to bring those up. And one other thing, I could be persuaded, although somebody will not be happy about it, that in order, if we go forward with that assessment, that maybe we could extend when the dark skies comes in and these people don't have to pay that money quite as soon, if that's possible. I think it is, but, and, and I'm only one vote, so might, might fail six to one or something like that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Fred. Uh, I wanna thank Senator Pasadomo, obviously, for being here with our, to discuss our legislative priorities, and certainly Greg and anybody, everybody that will reach out to the other members. Um, Looking forward to that, doing maybe some of the intangibles or going that extra mile, so to speak, that maybe some other cities don't. So thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, Congressman Francis Rooney and Commissioner Ray Sandelli will be in town tomorrow night at uh, one of the local private local organizations. Correction. So it'll be, good. it'll be good to have them in town. And Correction. Rooney won't be here. He okay. Canceled out. 
He will? Um, okay. I got a phone call from... That, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll solve that tomorrow night, and we'll give a report on that. But I'm looking forward to getting some updates from them as well. We've discover, uh, discussed the 9-11 event, which uh, certainly I hope folks can join us. It's just an amazing uh, remembrance of 9-11. Uh, and Greg, thank you for taking on that ceremony and looking forward to that. And I wanted to give an update in terms of the resolution that was passed this summer is finally going to get, get put to the test, so to speak, the last week in September. Uh, Mayor Kevin Ruane is president of the Florida League of Mayors, as we know, and we're work he is working with Senator Rubio and Senator Scott, and the strategy is to, and you've heard me say this before, we've got commitment from the White House on the Everglades, we've got commitment from the United States House of Representatives on the Everglades, commitment out of our governor, commitment out of our state senate, commitment out of our state house, and commitment out of a lot of governors. The last piece of the puzzle is the United States Senate. So we are going to meet with our local um, senators, right, from Florida. But our locals are also going to pinpoint about somewhere between 6 and 11. And I know that's not but an accurate but of other senators that sit on certain committees that the mayors from Florida should go talk to. So it's not, and that's exactly what we did this summer. We moved it from a southwest or even a Florida regional issue to a national issue. And that's the same approach. We're going in with a full head of steam and that will be the last week of September. And a lot of times, and we've been to those, uh, you kind of have the theory of strength in numbers, right? You bring 50 mayors, no. It's gonna be very pinpointed and very targeted. So it's okay. gonna be a good approach and I'll keep you updated on that. And. Um, I, I just I go back to the legislative priorities again. Um, let's let's go at it harder than ever. We've been going at it hard, so it's hard to say let's go harder, but let's go harder. We, we we'll do it. And I'm confident of this council and very thankful for the discussions that we had tonight and moving forward. So that is it. Is there any more announcements from anybody? Okay, we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes, which would be from August. 21st 2019 so moved is there a second further discussion roll call please councilman gibson aye. councilman forbes aye councilwoman carumba aye councilman dewitt aye councilwoman carr aye mayor simmons aye okay public comment members of the public uh kathy please come forward thank you yes let me close the meeting by this. I didn't say it before. I want to remind everyone there are, there are legitimate people collecting the necessary items that they need at Grand Bahama and Abaco. And as soon as they might have gotten the clearance now, there are airplanes and boats ready to go with this. So I know you all know, but please remind everybody you know and anyone watching, be careful who you contribute to because, you know, whenever a tragedy like this happens, everyone's theirs trying to do good so that's the only thing thank you very much thank you very much other members of the public and I did want to share one story I forgot to share early just real briefly there was somebody I was actually uh, talking to today a friend of mine said they knew somebody uh, in the Bahamas and got through uh, the first half of the hurricane in other words and the house was barely standing in the eye wall and we of course those I'm not trying to um, make light of this one way or another, but in the eye wall, it's calm, right? And right. some, you may remember, we, when the eye wall went outside and took a picture, right? This gentleman didn't think his house was going to make it. In the eye wall, swam down four houses to somebody that he knew, got in the house, rode out the storm, and sure enough, his house didn't make it. His house was gone. So mm. you hear all kinds of stories. He swam down four, because the water was already rushing in he couldn't walk down four houses he swam four houses and it could have saved his life because his house was completely gone after the other end of the um, hurricane came around so very very sad thoughts and prayers and uh, god bless everybody thanks for a great meeting motion to adjourn we are adjourned thanks everybody